one could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I have seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library? Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. We've got something uh, really special for you today. Um, I think you're going to enjoy this, and it's my pleasure to share it with you. Um, some of you know that I've been doing this uh, tailspin thing. Um, some uh, audience members uh, challenged me to animate uh, Baloo and Rebecca from Tailspin Dancing. We did that and then I thought that's kind of nice. It could do with some scenes before and after it. Uh, so I've been um, thinking about the scenes that I put before and after it. Some of you have been seeing me doing that uh, in the videos that I've been uploading. And uh, I'm going to do a scene, I'm planning to do a scene featuring the Shere Khan character. Um, now, Dalespin, uh, the TV show, has taken these amazing milk cow characters and just destroyed them and turned them into cheap Saturday morning formula balls and circles. So I, I decided when I did the Baloo animation, which I'll show you in a minute, I'll scrub through it. Uh, it needs to be colored. Um, to look at the original Milk Carl Baloo because I just I just felt awful in my heart thinking I'm drawing this because I know a few people that worked on the original Tailspin and they're lovely people but they're just hacks in the UK that you know Disney Toons UK was um, you know when they made DuckTales the movie uh, and bless them they just you know they're, they're not American feature quality and uh, a lot of the Tailspin layouts were done I know they were redesigned in the States for that formula, but they were done for people like that to be able to draw the character. And I'm not going to draw. I'm not going to draw Baloo like that. I just go and do that. So I looked at the original uh, Milk Cow, and um, now I... Uh, <laughs> Mute is complaining about my haircut. My wife's complaining about my haircut. Everybody's complaining about my haircut. Somebody give me a compliment about my haircut. <laughs> 
Um, so uh, I haven't changed it. It just needs to grow. Uh, so um, so uh, <laughs> I'm messing with you. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, so the uh, yeah. So as I look at Shere Khan, I'm going to look at the milk cow Shere Khan, and I was sort of doing some frame by frames to study it for myself and I thought you know this is an amazing head turn this is an amazing head turn that we have uh, um, of Shere Khan why don't I rather than just study it for myself in private why don't I study it on a live stream and share with you just the amazing things that a master animator uh, like Milk Cull does when he when he turns a character's head uh, or something like that. Uh, thank you, uh, Demi Remy. Thank you. Um, at least somebody likes it. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, Cameron Allen Davidson Black, how are you, sir? Uh, Charlene, Charlene Giles, good to see you. Uh, Mute Midori, I'm just teasing you, Mute Midori. I know. Um, Copper Star, how are you? Um, and there we go, Demi Remy. Okay, so let's jump into studying this uh, Shere Khan thing. Um. All right, so this is the uh, the blue stuff I um, I roughed out and tied down like this, and then I cleaned it up and in between it, so we have something like that now right so this is my own animation um but before i do the shere khan i'm going to make a study uh, before i do my own shere khan i want to make a study of his head because he's wearing a business suit and he's standing upright in tailspin so we're gonna make a study of his head and I've got this lovely scene. Um, hopefully you're all hearing me and all seeing me. Just mention in the chat if there's a problem. I've got this lovely scene that I found that I've been scrubbing frame by frame on YouTube. And I th figured like, okay, let's just jump straight in here. Now, I'm, I've drawn him once or twice on live streams before at the request of people, but I don't really know the character, right? So I'm just making a brief... Um, silhouette study of the main portions of his head turn and we'll see how this goes um, but it isn't just your run-of-the-mill head turn this this is something extremely special right so already we can really see the I mean the strong silhouette of uh, of the character I mean just just look at that you just you kind of like you kind of like what a, what a profile, right? <laughs> That's the character's profile, right? So we've got some musculature. We've got the, the back coming out here. And this comes around here like this. Like that. All right. So this is going to be kind of like an animation breakdown of uh the legendary milk cows um pro probably his most um celebrated character i personally prefer sir hector in sword in the stone but uh it's horses for courses all right um so let's look at this head turn what's next just bear with me oh yes okay interesting so i'm not gonna do that yet i'm gonna do the extremes first what a pose what an expression wow okay so now we have something like this So that nose is going all the way down here oh my word what squash and stretch you're in for a real treat those of you that love real animation that you know love what makes hand-drawn animation special you're gonna really enjoy watching this i feel now I f does he what happens to his back here does he become more erect 
no his back more or less stays you got to bear with me while I'm doing this his back more or less stays in the same it's very subtle very subtle so there's a bit of a turn okay so there's just a bit of a turn here just a little bit not too much and in fact this stays here so here we can see here on this silhouette that he's glancing over his shoulder i don't know if you can see that right but the silhouette basically explains that he's glancing over his shoulder i'm i'm getting i'm reading that right and there's you get there's amazing scorching stretch there right so the next The next thing we're going back into a normal pose, right? So now this is turning more into kind of like a profile, right? Oh, wow, look at the head angle. So we're introducing the side of his head like this. His ear is coming up. I'll have to double check the placements of these arcs when I go in there, but I really want to get the the silhouette of the character, right? Because I want to try and when I'm doing this, particularly with a Milk Carl character, I want to try and get inside Milk Carl's um, Milk Carl's uh, head. So I'm trying to work i always work this way anyway when i do breakdowns um as you saw with the naruto breakdown i did but um particularly with this i'm trying to get inside the master's head um to be able to um see what the way he thinks right so we've got the head turn with the subtle body action going on there right um, bum, 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 bum. then what have we got um, there's a big the real that's a little maybe this pose yeah let's have it yeah that's the pose we're gonna have it at all right so this neck comes up and the ear is here his head so all these triangles and shapes Right, this is going to be his on this side and his chin. Mm. I may have to revise what's going on with the body before I continue. See, this is the most important thing. When you're making animation studies, watch what I do. I'm always constantly checking certain things because the and I'm working from a extreme sense right sometimes when you see me doing anime animation and again sorry to the anime fans I'm not trying to belittle anime it is very limited with a very low frame rate and a lot of the action stuff which is their best stuff the stuff that it's really worth talking about is very quick and it's very done in a very straight ahead way so virtually like every other frame in that regard is a, is a, is an extreme or a key so sometimes when you see me breaking down anime it might look like i'm just copying frame for frame but when you're doing more advanced stuff like this you really want to find your extremes um which are these main poses and then you want to then go back and look for your keys now before i go and look for keys now look at the nice we can see the basic head turn happening here but what what makes it advanced 
is going to be the look at that silhouette it's just it just is so full of life and it's showing the head turn like it's just so perfect <laughs> you know it's just <laughs> right um okay uh so then we've got the last extreme because there's a look he's talking um here but i'm just gonna hit that last pose so his head is more or less he's he's really just going from one pose to another his body is turning around very subtle stuff his body is turning around it's more or less the same thing here more or less so he's just talking almost feels like the same so we're kind of staying around this pose as he's talking and i'll have to come back and, and and think about that okay so one two three four five right so this whole animation oh it's so much more than this but th the framework is these five frames now can we see just right off the bat just how full of see one of the laws that get i'm going to write this big for you that really gets misunderstood and taken for granted is the law of appeal appeal <laughs> appeal people think that appeal appealing oh we all know that word it's got to be appealing yeah we get we if we have a nice character it's appealing you know if if we if we put get all the detail in there it's like but that doesn't mean appeal right appeal in an animation sense is, is you know even when you look at it like this you just know right god that's nice right you can see a head turn like that it just says it all you know it just just so the law of appeal is extremely important and it's actually you know when you get the law of appeal right you've basically got mastery down um you've got mastery down to a t all right now let's go back and let's start drawing in these how are we doing for time what's my time on the live stream 17 minutes okay let's start drawing in these uh poses so i'm gonna just gray these up And we're gonna start building these poses and looking at the keys and breakdowns in between which will turn it into a nice dialogue -y type head turn right so i've just got a there's a lot of frames here so you got to bear with me while i scrub on youtube i scrub back through the scene all right I'm not sure that I'm going to bother too much with his stripes. I might look at his stripe design, but I'm more interested in getting his head. Right. All right. Now, let's give me about a... Uh, let's, let's work with a seven. Right, so here we've got a triangle in his head like this. And his eye sits inside it, right? And his eye, very illustrative. Okay, back. The, what I love about the old, old, the real Disney stuff, I should say, right? The real Disney stuff. What I love about the real Disney stuff, and I mean the stuff before the Renaissance, because however good the Renaissance was, they had a, they, they had this system where they would hire cleanup artists and they that would have formulas for drawing the characters now every animator had formulas back in the day but they were a lot more illustrative they were like real kind of artists with illustrative backgrounds they weren't looking so much for model consistency because you had a bunch of animators the nine old men uh, people like Ollie Johnston, Frank Thomas, Milk Carl, they all basically had their junior animators and whatever. They had junior animators, assistant animators, assistant in-betweeners and all that. And they would work a lot more intuitively. Okay, 
so the eye kind of sits let's just give him a bit of definition there on there like that now amazing nose design just straight off there like that with another um now this shape this shape goes this is actually in line with this right see now i'm being all formula okay so this guy he just went ahead and did whatever you know his his natural illustration and used animation shapes the science of shape simplification to basically get um get this this level of expertise but i love that about the real the 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 real disney stuff it didn't have like these generic formulas for drawing eyes they just drew eyes the way they wanted to draw eyes and they changed the eye shape many times throughout the animation it didn't stick to this as his eye shape right so now we've got the mouth which comes up here now this is a smile line probably a little bit higher there like that and this comes all the way up like that very good very good i'm absolutely loving um studying this character i'm even trying to be all uh like milk cow with my line choices i'm trying to get inside obviously he made it up from his head right and i'm studying from him but i'm trying to get it nice and tidy like milk would have drawn it. i want to that's another thing you want to do when you um particularly if you know about a little bit about the animator you're studying and the, their work method you want to try and get inside that personality the way they would work and, and incorporate that into your study right so this goes straight down here like this what it just just all fits into the silhouette so nicely the ear is a, is a kind of like a square all right which comes off this way like that there we go lovely beautiful beautiful head shape in profile form and then we've got the bunching which is something like this then this comes straight here straight here and up here so that comes off like that i'm not going to be too religious about these right now here he's got stripes so we've got one stripe here another stripe up here right it's actually going all in a straight line this so i need to i need to bear that in mind right so these come off here and this comes out the side in Hair like that okay right of course he has whiskers which I'm not really I mean whiskers are a big part of the character actually so I said I'm not really gonna but if I want to capture the character part of what makes him is his whiskers right, so now he's got his neck and this is great the anatomy of his back all right so you can see the spine and the trapezius coming in here with the scapula which will go straight on here this actually makes a lot of the character this anatomical back that he has it's um it's not something that I'm going to unfortunately that I'm going to be able to use in the in my um, animation of the tailspin version of him but um, I'm going to make a study of it anyway because it's so important to this actual head turn that it's what what's going to make this so great now we've got his back like that i'm gonna lose the 
that so we've got more anatomy in his back and I'm gonna look at these stripes I said I wouldn't but I'm gonna look so we've got one coming out here and straight along here like this which comes up and straight I'm not really going to um, try to get them so exact right then we've got this he's actually got less neck hair like that well I don't have time to perfect it I'm on the live stream so it's good enough we're just making it so now hair in line with the shoulder we're gonna come off with one like this right and this one comes here it'll be interesting to see uh, you know the 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 stripes on the body because in the real animator training library i've got the lecture the secret science of shape simplification where we take a we take a peacock with all these um let's see i'm getting lost here we take a peacock with all these uh eyes on its um tail and we basically go about simplifying that. Now, here I'm looking at somebody else's design, and I must confess at the moment, I'm doing a bit of hand-eye coordination. Now, I've studied tiger stripes as I was making my study of the great, for my own design, the great one, but, um, and they just generally run along the main muscular features of the back, but there's no real definite um, thing. So this one comes like this. And here's where I'm starting to lose it a little bit, but I don't mind because it's good coordination training so now that goes there and then we've got one here like that and as I said I'm here to more study the head turn but I want to look at the stripes the way they deform throughout the scene and he doesn't actually move his body much actually so we've got another one here like this and one here like that now the next pose is so much fun right. here I'm kind of just rushing these I'm kind of making that a lot thinner than what it needs to be but that'll do right that'll do right so there's a there's a, the first um, image of uh the first extreme or the first pose right so let's now work on the next thing now i'm gonna really i'm gonna watch his body more than anything as i enter this pose to see how much is moving they're using trace backs to keep it alive a lot of it is kind of in the same place there's very subtle movement going on here practically none at all all right so i'm going to remove no next panel i'm going to remove that so we don't have as much movement going on in the back as i originally thought right and i guess that's good because there's not much going on with the stripes then <laughs> right so now we have the neck it'll bulge it just a little bit as he turns right so now let's get this head down right so this head is amazing right so we're gonna focus on the triangle of the top of the head and this is where his eye squash and stretch in the eye is just fantastic right so we're stretching this triangle up like that and we're putting an inside a mini triangle a 
look at the eye shape right so it's still half closed it's so sort of like suspicious yeah this is exactly what makes real i'm gonna just because i I'm, in fact i'm glad i started this thing real animator training because now i can apply it to because i was sitting there just people who don't know me that well when they catch up with me again they think i love disney right and it's true i did used to love disney but even the stuff the company made after the walt disney years like i loved the renaissance films and all that but i actually you know i don't want to use the word but because but i actually now have grown to despise the company so people don't really they think oh have you seen this on disney plus and all that they're trying to make small talk with me and i'm like i don't want to go into it but like so i'm so glad i invented this thing real animator training because now i can refer to real disney right i can call this real disney so these this is what makes real disney so special these just by looking at the eye let's go straight into the i haven't drawn anything just an eye right it just says it all about like yeah there's so much going on in just those shapes those few lines that make it what it is you know just completely giving the characters a uh, personality with that eye right so this comes down and the nose is here i've got a kind of make it add up with the other nose there's squash and stretch in the nose but this pose is just insanely good right so this then we have these two lines here so this is actually higher right comes up here like this the line is in the middle see when you're making your animation breakdowns you you don't want to just copy the screen i know i say this a lot you want to really have it relating with your your own study right so i'm trying to relate this nose shape with the nose shape that i'm and the arc is working right, right? so we have this now the cheek look at that it's just uh the the cheek has come down this is a real squash and stretch expression here so first and foremost i'm gonna tackle the head all right so this comes one the bunching is something like that okay so that's out all right so this comes out, down, up and around, yeah, like that. So then this is gonna come straight here, up here, and in here like that, all right. So then here we've got the bunching happening. Okay, now this is just awesome, so in the middle of the center line of his mouth let's just let's do the center line of his mouth right what an expression all right we've got this stretch in the the foremouth of his snout which is just so much fun right and there's some more stretch here so really we we're talking about squash and stretch in that video where i was doing my own blue animation but here's a more extreme example of squash and stretch you can see in the foremouth of this character then we've got his bottom lip um, coming out here like that right so i'm not really rushing through this today um as i said this is something that i would have personally was going to do off stream um you want to know like how 
I train, you know, I'm training a lot of you guys up that join my training library with watching my videos. You don't want to know how I train. Well, when you get to a certain level, you train this way, right? You study the best. You study the masters. And again, there's nothing wrong. You can study them whatever level that you're at. But you will only really garner the nutrients from doing something like this if you are versed in animation law, right? If you're versed in animation law, so you know what you're looking for, you understand the law of arcing, the law of slowing in and slowing out, the law of timing, the law of post to pose and straight ahead, particularly for stuff like this, the law of primary and secondary action, right? There's a lot of that going on in this head turn, I'll tell you that. So if you don't, if you just make it like a copying exercise, where you're copying the screen and then looking at it all move and think, oh yeah, I did that for practice. Yeah, you'll get something from it, but not really, you know, it's like, it's like the, a guy, you know, making up his own way of learning gymnastics. He'll get something from it, but he's not really working as fundies and he'll just get a good workout, and, you know, maybe a few bruises along the way right so this I want to get this head right so you'll see me making adjustments here right this all for me this is all about the character's head right I'm probably not gonna put this this amount of squash and stretch in the animation that I will do of um, of Shere Khan but um, that said, um, it's always best to, this is the best way to study a character. Again, once you understand the science of shape simplification and model, if you don't really know, understand character models and how this stuff works, then it is just going to be like a, a copying thing and you won't really garner the kind of nutrients that I'm garnering from from doing this but I don't want to discourage you um, if I'm inspiring you to go and look at um, s uh, some masterful animation whatever it may be whatever you consider to be masterful animation at your particular stage of development um, go and do it you know um, this is all about developing your skills and um, growing along the way right so this back okay so this is what's happened all right this is what's happened so we've got the back muscles isn't that great right so we've got a spine there with the back turning there like that bum 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 so we have something like this now right so the squash and stretch in the face now I am gonna see what I'm gonna do so this part of the neck has disappeared so we've got the stripe at the back of the head here then we've got these two stripes now I've got something to go with I've got something to work with and I'm gonna have to adjust them to the way I've drawn them because I've tried to be accurate, but I don't want to hang around too long on these stripes. So now this one comes here and curls over his shoulder up here like that. So along the musculature, so we've got the scapula along there like that. Then this other one bends in like this. So again, once you're, so this was really having animation knowledge is really helpful for doing stuff like this as i said the secret science of shape simplification with the peacock thing which i that course that i made in the advanced archive once you understand all of this stuff right and understand the musculature of like so his scapula is here right and his humerus is here so 
the relief of the body is going to be like this right so once you understand all those things and obviously this is this here right you can then start to speed through it so where i spent time on the previous stripes i think i'm okay now just kind of speed through these stripes and not really have much hassle at all right building brain cells if young mage burger burger is in the chat he will know what building brain cells is all about right so we have this um now this one is so we had the two there and there'll be another two here right so that comes up i'm going to turn on my light box because it's a subtle move not too much and i'm just going to go along with what i've got here so these climb up this is going to climb up like that this is going to turn this way. I'm not even, on this thing, I must confess, I'm not too bothered about looking at, looking at it now. I'm kind of just going to do my own things because I am live and um, we want to really concentrate more on the head turn, right? I'll, so I'll tackle these stripes more or less as I would, right? So there we have the first two poses we see this huge stretch in his face right but can you see this and this are the volume okay so everybody's afraid of losing volume that's what makes this stuff so good right right so the stretch is here right all in here right everything else is solid right okay so let us now um move on to the next um pose bum, bum, bum. yes so here this was it so the body comes back on itself yeah i want to watch the body i'm not watching the head because i've kind of mapped out in my silhouette Okay, so the body comes back. Man, what an expression. What an expression. Right, so the body comes back on itself into a profile view, right? So this spine line, ingenious, right? He's separated it into two silhouettes, right? He's got this spine line here like this. Now he's showing the anatomy of disappearing one the blow this half behind there right now he's gonna disappear and we're gonna go we're gonna just see the shoulders as the back turns absolutely awesome incredible stuff just top brass super stuff right so we've got something like that on the body right now i'm gonna have fun with the head so this now this triangle is the top portion of the head which he is going to now turn his head to us but he's maintaining that triangle but the position look the triangle is this way right the triangle is this on the profile now, as he's turning his head, it's getting more central. And now it's it's a lot more central, right? So the top of his head is here like this, right? So then he'll have the back of his ear come up like this with his hairstyle. So this is all broken up. So we've got one two, three, four. Now I'm doing that because this is arcing up. I'm not focusing on the face at the moment as of yet, because this is where the head is. This is where we're animating our head turn, right? 
is where the turn is actually happening. Notice how the dip, you know, occurs like this. So then here we have this section here and another section out here like that coming down. Right, now I'm going to go in here and uh, do his face. So we have the eye line, which is about here, and the triangle. So again, we've got the triangle of the, the facial, you know, the eye socket triangle, if you want, like this. And his eyebrow is sitting on top of that, like that. Now this is the blink of the head turn, right? So he is, his eyes are in blink mode, right? So we're going to close that. He hasn't got an eyelash like that. It's very important. So, and what I love about Milk Carl is he always has these little creases under the character's eyes to give them this little bit more. Um, personality into their um, expressions right so then we've got his stripe there like that right so his eye is closed here right um, let me talk about that eye shape actually the closed eye shape right and his eye as it's closed is, is as big as it is like that right um, and then we're going to unify those two like that and up there like this and have the other eyebrow down here with his other eye socket which is just being introduced like that and his eye is super small here like this so you see how he's kind of cheating it in right but it's fine so he's not even giving all this anatomy or anything here. He's just bringing it in like that. And then we have the nose. Now I've got to look at the arc of the nose, right? So the nose dips in. You want to think of the outside shape first. Okay. That's what we want to look at. The outside shape first I'm gonna come in up and around there we go so that's the nose of the character with the nostril and I'm trying to maintain size I'm kind of like being quite accurate from the get-go without scribbling quickly right at the end of the day we all it all takes about the same speed you know it's whatever zone you're in if you're in the if i'm roughing my own stuff right i'm probably gonna want to be a little bit more looser but here i've got the perfect guide right the work of the mighty milk car right so then this comes here like this and go straight down now I've done that too much there so look at the length look at the squash and stretch you see which you know I'm learning heaps about squash and stretch myself here because I wouldn't dare you know it's so funny it's like what so if so what what's the worst that can happen it'll look bad but for some reason on our own stuff well on my own stuff anyway I can't speak for you guys sometimes I'm I'm irrationally afraid of doing something like squashing and stretching it to that extent and like really what's the worst that can happen it's, it's like foolish mentality really but so I'm absolutely loving doing this right so then this comes here like that especially as I've worked more with humanoid characters throughout my life and it's funny because now I'm working with animals as I'm doing my groundhopper project. But those are humanoid animals anyway. So the smile 
is like this. Actually, let's let's analyze the smile. It's a triangle. See an, another triangle like this, right? So you got the triangle like this, and then you got another triangle like that. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm wanting to decode the shapes, the the very uh, intuitive, natural subconscious shapes of Milt Carl. And I want to decode them and acquire them for myself, right? Which is another reason why I like to do this kind of stuff, right? So this mouth is open here. We've got a little bit of a tooth here. Some kind of tongue here like that. Straight square jaw like this this then comes in it's actually more down like that okay so there we are that's the okay now let's look at that head as it turns it stretches and squashes as it turns into that um this stuff now this is going to be a lot simpler this next stuff so we have we have this shape which has changed direction so it was this way but as he's turning his head right it's changing direction to give us contour on the body right so we've got it changing direction. So naturally, these these two are now going to be changing direction as well. Now from here, we've got this shoulder line, and I've I've kind of done it a little too extreme there, right? So that's going to be more like that. Right. More like that. Then we're going to have, again, I'm going to kind of rush through these uh, stripes as long as I um, get the directional change. That's all that matters. Right, so then we have that. Now this is changing. Oh, we've got this continuing down here, under there, giving it. See, now that's giving him a lot more volume to his body. Just magnificent. Then the stripe is going to turn here like that. Then this one turns. And is a straight here. And then as, as it's changing direction, we also have to understand the contouring of his anatomy, which was what, what sells the illusion, right? So I'm looking at what he's doing, but I'm kind of pulling it to adjust my slightly misplaced stripes. They're not necessarily misplaced, but they're not really a hundred percent to the placement that he had them at, right? So this is going to one here like this, and there's going to be this little one here, All right? It's going to go this way. Do we see a little? Yeah, we see a little bit of that. So then these two are going to turn. Right. So these two turn this way. Now I'm just going to kind of like, I think, actually he drops his back more here. Right. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, bum. So that arcs down. So while I'm not necessarily 
I'm just going to do what I do here with my own stripes to make that work. Right. So, you see it took 17 minutes to block this out, but uh, the initial silhouettes out, but you see now we're starting to just get our key, our extreme frames down, and that's where uh, things are starting to um, make it take a little longer, right? But we're gonna break, we're gonna put some keys between here so you can really see. So anyway, this is you can see how that's hurt working. Now we're gonna do the other change up. So we're gonna turn. I'm gonna watch purely what's happening with the body, right? Right, so the body is not, ah, so the front has been introduced. Right, so he's in a kind of neutral pose here. Okay, so the shoulder rises, the shoulder rises and there's a twist. There's more of a twist happening, so Possibly this goes smaller, I'm not. Now the neck comes in and then we have the other side of the body coming in on us here like that. Then this is all kind of like turn. So I'm going to draw in the head and then we're going to work out how that turns like that right because he's twisting around okay let's now sort the head out so again we've got our triangle of the head the, the top portion which helps the head angle work right i'm gonna move slightly away from my uh, original silhouette as i pull this guy into place now this comes over to this side so this helps figure out the top of his head. The ear sits at the back like that. Right. And then his all in line in here is where his snout, his, he's called his snout, is the maxillary portion of his face. Right, so now we have the eye line up here like this. So again now here in line with this we've got the expression because we were looking at the triangle of the eyes but his eyes are a lot more slanted now and there's a lot of squash and stretch going on in this guy's eyes that and they're tiny little eyes which is great. What I don't like about the, the even the Renaissance Disney stuff, which I feel it's not aged as well as this stuff, is, again, you see it more with the Pixar stuff. Uh, with Pixar, it's even more. Uh, they went bigger on the eyes, right? Now, they claim going bigger on the eyes helps you share... Uh, the character's emotions read well maybe for the lesser for me nobody's emotions read better than the nine old men so, like I mean that's that's real emotion like you know especially if you want to do more subtle stuff which is why on a movie like Prince of Egypt they they still had pretty big eyes but they were just making the eyes bigger and bigger and for me it made the look more babyish right the the it, it just made it more kiddie um, so I love movies like Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin um, and all those things but you see when they did Pocahontas they took the eye size right down because it, they didn't they wanted to do something sincere with it well these guys were doing comedic exaggerated cartoon characters like this but he's still grounded very much in um, in anatomical structure and strong draftsmanship but they had you know he had the um he had the smaller eyes right 
and there's this this bigger eye thing is just for me it's it just got too big and I was putting that a lot in my own work because of my, I was heavily influenced by the Renaissance stuff so slowly slowly I'm coming away from that stuff as I'm as I'm going back to the what I call the real Disney right the Disney uh, the core right where the founding fathers of real animation you know not the the second wave uh, while I have a lot of respect for those guys and I like them um, I just feel that the founding fathers were just leagues ahead and I want to I want to get in harmony with them and and go back to those fundamentals and apply that so if I ever was to revisit um, I would finish if I got the budget to do my little red film and finish the four minute thing I would keep the designs but if I was was to um, ever get the budget to make a full full-on feature based on that small feature uh, four minute thing that I've got planned I would redesign her to have much smaller eyes right so this nose uh, comes out here like this now you can see um, as I'm turning the head I'm trying to get the volumes right it doesn't matter you can always fix it a little bit later and even if you were like working in a studio you take your drawing to the Xerox machine and blow it down or you just redo it you know a lot of people just so worried about um, saving time but they don't have enough confidence in their own draftsman skills so they would take the drawing to the Xerox machine and blow it up or reduce it down and tape it over the existing one right. so the head is looking here now he's in another kind of like he's making an interesting mouth shape here right I'm really taking my time to get this right as I said I'm not just burning through this study the way I would on some of my other ones um, so this is gonna come up off and through like that yeah look at that expression um, I think I think the head is nice that size because he's turning to us so a little bit bigger is better I feel right so this is jutting more out like this it's a difficult expression this one it's not quite as straightforward as the previous ones again I want to capture the essence of it right so originally I had that that would be a lot lower like that and this actually would come out more to the side so the head is bigger here now we've got the three stripes that go along the side of the head and this one comes off the other side yep that'll do that will do do we see the other ear just about there right look how it all harmonizes and balances so well these facial features all right so now the neck that's this is a this is a very very strong drawing and I'm going to take my time with getting this right. right. So we've got the neck turning with the inner markings of the chest and the neck here. Then here, this is going to come down. And this actually goes lower, but I'm going to keep it there like that. This 
comes lower down now like that so here we've got a lot of turn and twist and torque on the body right and I'm trying to get that in silhouette before I go putting in these stripes so we've got the stripe here stripe here it doesn't matter too much about the stripes on this side because we're introducing them now these stripes so this there's one that's under his chin here which has gone this way so I'm guessing this one here as it turns see we've now got the neck all right like this so we want our stripes to to match that right yeah so this this is the one around his shoulder area so the way to remember that is the scapula stripe okay so when you look at animals i don't know i i i, I I'm, I can't really say this with authority because I'm far better at humans than I am at animals, right? I've studied human anatomy much more than I have animals. But as I look at my own cats and as I've been making studies of animals with markings, I've been noticing that the markings actually are kind of like the uh, where the musculature is on certain muscles and certain bones like my cat's got markings where the parietal bone is and where the occipital bone is and it's almost shaped like those bones and like i i noticed that right so now this one is turning this way and these two have squashed together as it, as, as he's turned right so this one is turning this way right so you can see the how this shape will expand into that right this shape will expand into that so it's very important when you're doing these kind of i've called this an advanced head turn right because there's a lot of stuff going on in here there's twisting and turning in the body there's um right so this one right is gonna go here and you gotta when you're working in this pose to pose way extreme poses you're going to be able to really go in there and work all this stuff out, right? Some people would like to do straight ahead passes on this stuff, which I would very much advise against, right? Um, I would do, do a straight ahead pass on the keys and extremes, but I wouldn't try to do straight ahead on all of these stripes, um, which is kind of like, I think, I can't remember what I did on the Science of Shape Simplification Peacock Lecture, but I think we did the same thing. We did, we did the straight ahead on the actual key frames, right? So I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. Look at that. Yeah, his head is a little bigger here. Now, I could do two things. I could just bring him in a bit right like that yeah that kind of brings him a little bit to size like that all right um we have just got one more drawing how much like the first hour has gone right so kind of doing good for time we've now got one drawing left to make and then we're gonna throw in some keys right so i'm gonna watch his body is his body practically just on trace packs i'm just watching his entire body so his neck and shoulders are moving in relation to how they should yeah his body's more or less where it is right there's a little bit of bulging in his neck right a little bit of lowering of his shoulders a little bit of a, a bulge out here a little bit like so 
I mean, I can't guarantee that because I'm just looking at a YouTube thing, but there is movement that could be from the tracebacks to keep it alive. They wouldn't use a held, but they wouldn't really use a held body. Um, they would trace things back. Now the, the head angle is coming up. So we're going to look at this expression and we're going to animate this expression within the framework of the character. So I'm animating the silhouette of his head at the moment. Right? And his mouth is going to open up. Right? So his mouth his mouth is higher actually. Mouth doesn't really change in silhouette too much. Right? It's just his mouth shape. Right? Okay. So now let's look at his eyes. So we've got the triangle of his eyes reversing on itself up here like that. With his one eye in here like this. We want to get these right. We've got this. This other eye here like that maybe so this is where you need to be careful all right so then this is going to be at the top of his head this is going to be at the top of his head like this this is more straight all right there we go just mapping this out So then we've got the nose. So the nose is still kind of, he's, he's just talking here. So there's not much difference, right? But there will be squash and stretch on the nose as he uses his mouth shape, which is what I love about real Disney animation, right? Real Disney animation, um, they always squashed and stretched the nose even if it was a human being um, they squashed and stretched the nose when the character was um, acting and talking all those kind of stuff well, one of the best examples is the door handle in um, Alice in Wonderland um, looking at the way the doorknob's nose um, goes up and down and all that stuff it's while it while it's talking it's just so much fun right so then we've got the mouth shape i'm just mapping his face right in accordance to looking at the shapes so i'm looking seeing how it animates as i flip but i'm also referring to the original animation so I can learn the mouth shapes, right? That's what it's all about. Um, my personal way when I would go into animation studios and I would work on the higher end stuff, I would look at the model sheets and I would make my own drawings of the characters. I wouldn't necessarily follow their formulas, ways of drawing the characters. That's essentially for the cleanup people. Um, I have to find a way where I'm able to animate the character, kind of to model. Um, so I would learn the shapes. And another way that I would learn the shapes would be exactly what you see me doing here right is i would take some existing animation and i would just copy it but i wouldn't copy it like the word copy is misleading right because as i've said to you many times copying is you could be like a little child copying something that's inspired you and that's great because it all starts when you're a child so please don't think I'm belittling that but 
that's the the very you know basic kind of form of copying right what we're doing here which is why i refer to it as an animation breakdown rather than a copy because essentially it is a copy right um is i'm really studying the shape transitions of the character as it animates but also as it makes certain facial expressions like the squash and stretch of the nose this arrow area like like an arrow pointing down this this part of the nose right the the cheeks um the smile line you know all these things are important now how these three stripes on the side of the head how two of them go there and the bottom one goes there see i i now understand that right in my own way right without reading a formula of, of how and why you know which is what would oft, often be given you know and then you had those uh supervising animators uh do's and don'ts and all this and that that's important to take on board um but aside from that i wouldn't really spend too much time learning their particular formula for the character i just do it my way uh, because when you get to a certain level um it really doesn't matter right as long as what you've done is what they want right that's good enough right so this comes out to the side like that but it is difficult i mean in my early years i did struggle to keep things on model i would draw them all my own way on the first job i ever got in the animation industry i was fired <laughs> because i was drawing them all like disney characters or you know what a 20 year old or 21 year old would have thought presumptuously that i could draw in the disney style i still had a lot of development to go back then but um, i was fired for doing that and then even when i tried to draw them on model i couldn't because i was set in my ways and I wasn't experienced enough hadn't worked enough on many other studios so but once you find once you find your center you are sure <laughs> to win right so basically once you find yourself once you get used to certain things it all starts falling into place so wh whatever stage you're at now if you're listening to this um, and you're, you're feeling um, kind of like upset about how you can't make it happen this and that look everything takes its set amount of time okay um, you, your job is to just show up and do what you need to do in a certain way right and that certain way is having complete and total faith in yourself and your ability and what you're going to achieve and having the will and the discipline to do the necessary things that need to be done um, in order to achieve that right that's where i went wrong there so that why that is still there we see a little bit of that coming under in there like that so all of this is practically where it should still be right and this just slightly bulges out a little bit right so it's subtle stuff that i'm doing with these stripes now 
just moving them out down a little bit not too much maybe here we'll keep them more regular just move these ones a little bit like that you see it's this real heavy slow ends which is what I tried to tell people at the beginning of the basics archive of the training library that really separate the men from the boys or the girls from the ladies um, when it comes to um, animating good good stuff you know everybody likes the big movements but it's the settle that makes those movements worth it oh goodness now i'm gonna have to go back on some of these and sort his whisker oh dear i'm drawing on the wrong <laughs> wrong one looking at his expression thinking what the hell <laughs> was i that far out right so there we are like that this and then we've got these ones here like that okay so i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna just get his whiskers where they need to be okay so doesn't really matter really um, but we want these things to kind of one of the things I learned is, is they're not so consistent with things like that they're kind of consistent but they're not so consistent and when you look at whiskers they kind of catch the light and appear and disappear anyway right so the obsession with consistency is something that I used to have a lot in my earlier days as an animator um, it was only when I met my mentor who worked at Disney and Bluth and he had a lot of old Xerox milk cull stuff and he asked me to study those and he had little notes written on them um, did I realize wow these guys their stuff looks consistent but it's not that consistent okay so um an hour and 20 minutes in we have just covered the f extreme drawings of this head turn right and what i'm gonna do is, is i'm gonna do some actually hair yeah let's keep it let's keep it there's a lot of stuff going in between here what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do some more keyframes to show what makes this head turn even better, right? The timing. We're going to time it. We're going to look at some more mouth shapes and we're going to look at that. But what we have seen is the we've learned a lot about the stripes, the body, the musculature of the back and the head turn, which is the usual arc, but with squash and stretch in there. Um, so I will be doing that next. But before that, that um, you know, thank you for your time. But uh, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to uh, tell you all about my course because that's, you know, what keeps me going. Uh, people signing up to this course. Um, my Real Animator Training Library at ambanimation.com. Just go to Real Animator Training. Uh, you have a page here which explains all about the Real Animator Training Library, which I humbly call the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. You can watch all that this information and read all this here. There's testimonials, the usual stuff, you know, that you get on, on places like this. If you would like to see the work from people who have joined this place, uh, you can also see that here when you click the join now. There's a little preview video here showing people's work. Um, so we've got the training archives and the edutainment archives. 
Um, this is what I would call edutainment because you can't really follow along with me. You can try to follow along, but it's so advanced and you'll be doing drawing more than really re learning or understanding animation. So it's what I call edutainment. It's great content. It's fun, but it's edutainment. The training archives are the real dedicated thing, which is going to really help you be able to get to the level like I do to come on a live stream like this and just flawlessly and like this is my own animation here right so you'll be able to get to this level eventually i'm not gonna you know you won't get there in a year okay this is but but you have the foundational skills to get to this level by following the stuff in these training archives now these basic archives and things like this uh they're in separate archives basics intermediate uh, anatomy advanced the basics archive basically again you can watch these videos takes you through the six laws of movement timing arcing slowing in slowing out uh, post to pose and straight ahead solid drawing and uh, follow through overlap and drag with a bit of squash and stretch and you learn all that through doing bouncing balls swinging pendulums basic stick figures walking turning their heads jogging running front walking from the front walking from the you know running from the front so again watch the video it's extremely powerful this course takes you through the first six laws of movement the intermediate archive takes you consolidates those six laws of movement but you learn all about the flower sack and things like that and it takes you through the what i call the six laws of life which is anticipation squash and stretch primary and secondary action uh, action exaggeration appeal and staging so you learn all that in the intermediate archive um, so again, they're all step-by-step follow-along videos. The advanced archive will takes you a little bit with what we're doing here today, right? You, you know, you, in the basics and intermediate, you've been doing stick figures and flower sacks. You're going to learn how to put things on model here. You're going to learn about 360 head turns. You're going to learn all about the secret science of shape simplification, which is where you see me talking about the triangle of the head, the triangle of the eye and all that as I'm doing this stuff here. So... You're going to learn about drawing on model, 360 head uh, rotations, 360 body rotations, advanced uh, cycles with personalities in them. So just like you got personality in this head turn, except you're going to be doing it step by step and follow along with me in these in this course, which is what makes it so powerful. Then you have a dialogue thing, which you cannot do step by step because that's where you've got to start standing on your own two legs. The anatomy archive takes you through every single bone of the human body. You're going to do turnarounds of them, the shoulder, the thorax, the spine, the pelvis, the legs, the arms, the hand, the foot, the skull. All of these have uh, multiple videos in these uh, sections which are going to train you in your anatomy. Uh, and then the animation seminars are very much like what you see me doing here uh, in this video. Uh, so this is the, you know, that's what you'd get in the training archives. The edutainment archives, I'm not going to spend too much time on. Uh, this just pretty much like this kind of stuff. Um, you've got uh, animation breakdowns here where, you know, for example, you can see me breaking down uh, this scene from uh, Disney's Sword in the Stone in this one. So you can see me uh, breaking down all these uh, wonderful squirrels that are running around and tapping around. so very much like what you're seeing me doing here today you got tons of videos in this archive um, uh, that you can watch me doing breakdowns for you can even watch me making a film from start to finish with the how to animate your own film seminar series you can watch the film here it's a minute and a half but you see the characters being designed from scratch and animated the layouts the backgrounds everything all animated to this level over 56 live streams you can watch the whole thing being made from start to finish it's a minute and a half worth of animation almost two minutes uh, so it's a it's a really good uh, it's while, while it might not be as thorough as the training archives and it might not really uh, give you the essential skills you need to actually start getting to that level it's extremely powerful content and it, it's, it, you know, if you're not ready to dive into training yet and you still want to kind of play around with your own things, the edutainment archives is kind of like a primer if you're, if you, if you're not willing to jump in and just 
uh, start doing the training immediately. Okay, so that is the Real Animated Training Library. Again, to remind you, we have here industry professionals. We've got people who've worked at Disney, people who've worked at Nickelodeon, people who have graduated from CalArts, people who've graduated from Bluth University, people who've been to Animation Mentor, people who have studied under Richard Williams' son at Pearson College London. We've got all the kinds of people joining this place uh, it is really, you know, the the most affordable. You're getting, as I said, CalArts costs 180 grand. Don Bluth costs 10 grand. So this is way more affordable than any of that. It's the price of an iPad Pro uh, at at its at it, you know, with 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 the pen and keyboard thrown in, maybe a mid-range laptop or a decent drone. You're getting the world's best animation training for that price. So um, go check it out. Real Animator Training Library. Again, here, this is the kind of people these the Real Animator Training produces. I'm very proud of Travis. He's made his own film here, and he's um, this is this is what he's you know just within three years of studying from the training library, he's producing content like this, and he's now going getting a huge following on Twitter, which he so thoroughly deserves. So that's the Real Animator Training Library. Go check it out. It's really life transformational. And again, um, if you're kind of wondering why I'm talking about that and you want to see my Shere Khan, well, it's the whole reason I'm here is this place is, you know, funding me by you joining it to be able to me to continue doing this uh, great free content. So, um, so thank you for your patience while I explained the power of the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation to you. AMB Animation real animator training ambanimation.com okay right let us now continue with our um sheer khan so i'm going to now look it's going to be a lot easier to do the uh keyframes between these extremes so i'm going to now look at the next one to do between here Okay, so he settles into the smiling pose here, between here and here, right? So, let's get our next panel, um, next panel, right? So this head, let me first sort out the silhouette so we're looking at the arc of the head so this is going to be kind of like a neutral head turn before we go in a new like a little bit of a turn because he's turned into this pose so we're going to do a little bit of a turn before we do this extreme stretch so it's almost like the we're repositioning his head into into more of a sort of like it's not quite a three-quarter but it's less of a profile to be a sort of like start point for the stretch of his head, right? So we're gonna have this. He's gonna now. I'm just gonna watch what happens to his ear as we come out of that pose. Okay. All right. So his ear is a little bit back here, like this, right? So. I'm just gonna now we're gonna watch his back something like this and this is gonna turn I presume we still see a little bit of his spine here so not too much right so you see the subtleties, right? So the neck has already turned. The neck has turned. The shoulders are coming together. Now, you know, leading into that, right? I'm going to be a little bit rougher as I do these frames, but that's okay. Um, this is going to stay upright. I presume like that all right so we have something like that right? 
So now we're going to look at the eye line angle. Now I'm going to watch what happens to his eyes as it stretches down. Okay, they travel a little to the side. There's not much. They don't go any lower, right? So his eyes are more like hair, right? So his eye is hair. This is straight along here like this. Now the triangle of the eye is up like that. This is straight. So straight, this, 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 right, this, this. Then we've got the nose, which is straight like this. So this triangle is just this, right? So look how this is just moving into eventually this. So, right, you see? Bum, bum, bum. Just like that. And the nose is... This expression is here like this, right? So the nose... comes somewhat here yeah I'm just mapping these two out and then I will I will flip between these two so at the moment I'm being quite strong with my line as I'm kind of mapping it out now now I'm in animation more so animation mode than I figured out where my extremes were but now I'm in animation mode make this work right so and then we've got a little bit of the other eye there the mouth okay comes is open a little bit comes over here like this with the shape coming under here like this All right the eye is kind of sneaky like that there okay now I'm gonna go from here to here right I'm gonna tidy that face up but that's essentially he's gonna do something like that and there's gonna be talking in between here and talk before he hits this pose right so let me quickly just make a now I kind of like know what I'm doing so I'm going to make this animate a little nicer right so um, I'm looking at the drawing I've looked at the drawing right but now I'm more concerned about see this is where I'm changing from being so accurate with looking at his drawings because again I'm not as I said this isn't just copy copy right I'm trying to familiarize myself if I don't know if young mage burger is still online um, but he'll know all about it the building of brain cells right I'm trying to build my brain cells to to become familiar with this character right so yes I'm looking at what he's done but less so as I'm making this particular drawing right as I'm wanting to get my shapes to arc I will look at his eye because that's the personality we don't want to lose that all right so then here we've got a a little bag under his eye and it's this kind of leaf shape right very very like almost flat the way he's done the eye but it's just so good it just works right um so this comes here like that and this one 
is here like this. So I can see the squash and stretch in the head, the, you know, as it turns right, towards us and these particular shapes. Right, so then he's got this not quite there yet. So these will come down and off. Right, there we are. So the snout now moves in like this. I'm going to have a look at the chat actually. Um, that's another thing about why this is edutainment. I'm going to have a look at the chat and I'm going to see if anybody's got any questions um, while I'm kind of like doing the stripes because the stripes are going to be almost like just in betweening things so I can elaborate and talk a little bit more if anybody's got a specific question here I'm not going to care too much about if the whiskers are animating right because I know that they'll kind of work regardless they're almost like special effects almost like effects animation not special effects like water ripples or things like that they're just gonna be at a certain point point in his face and they're going to look good All right so there now the ear is going to be about here. Right. Mm. Maybe, 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 yeah, maybe that does. Because I've got to remember that he does um, lean a little bit. Right. So let's. Let's do this. I've already got that. Right, I'm going to look at the chat now and see if anybody has a question. But I won't linger too long um, on it because there's a quite a bit of drawing to do today. And this may go on for around about three hours, this stream. But it's my pleasure to share with you the mastery of the hand-drawn animation um, all right so what's going on in the chat bum, bum, bum. let's have, let's a, have a quick, quick look um, okay red fox thanks for the movie suggestion i will look at that a little bit later um, yes, it is the scene where he's talking to Carr. How can I get into the anime industry? Honestly, I can't give you a definite answer from that. Uh, there's more opportunity now than ever to get into the anime industry. If you watch my channel, somebody who came off out of my training program got offered a job by a well-known Japanese animation studio. So um, people are certainly um, succeeding and in getting into the anime industry. Um, whether they're on my program or not, I'm sure, but uh, I do know that it can happen. So... Uh, so that's all cool. Um, yes, I did. I did cut my. So we don't really have any animation questions. Uh, I tried to get you all involved, but uh, but let's um, let's continue. Now we've got the stripes of this guy. Um, so let me just go back here. Yes, of course, we missed out that. So the neck 
will be something like this. Actually, it's a lot higher than that. There. And this will have to be a little bit different, right? So if he's turning his neck, it'll come down like that. So there I was thinking about my silhouette, but not really looking at it in an animation context. Okay, right. So let's quickly look at these stripes. So it's quite easy to get lost in here. So I'm going to look at this hair and see that this is traveling up here right so again i've got to think about what he's doing with his head first before i get too carried away with in just in betweening that stripe right he's just putting his head down so the arcs the stripes are all gonna arc right they're not just gonna in between like that they're gonna follow the law of arcing so we've got to think about things like that right so this is going to arc down and up and this is going to arc down so i'm thinking of all of these guys are just going to move be moving down slightly right so i don't have to worry too much right i can just check the arcs they're all going to be moving. I'll put the light box. I'll keep it on. It's a little strong, which is why I prefer, you know, paper definitely beats um, software for that because it's a little strong. So these are going to be coming down. Now these ones are going to be more going leveling up and um in betweening as is right getting a little fat there being a little careless with that but that's all right again this these for me are less are kind of superfluous right what i what i'm going to do with them is going to work because we built the framework with the keys but i'm not going to try and get them to be so accurate the live stream is otherwise the live stream will just get very long and very boring uh, I'm now just the further down I'm moving from his body I can not worry about the arcing of the stripes doing that because it's more the contouring of his shoulders where it would be doing that you see we've got something like that now right so let's just very quickly um, get these into place right yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Right. Pum pum. Right. So there's still a lot of stuff going on between there and there, but well, let's now break down between here and here, right? Um. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. So he stretches his mouth. And then we hit okay so this is we get out of that quite quickly right and we come out of it on thirds now we come out of it on thirds so this is two thirds right this is two thirds of the way bum, bum, bum. so this is two thirds of the way right so now I'm gonna be quite fast with the head hair interesting so the eye line will be two thirds of the way. The nose will be two thirds of the way. Right. So here you want to people in the real animated training library, pay attention. All right. When you make animation breakdowns, if you want to like rather than doing your own stuff, right, rather than like, uh, you, you, because I tell you, don't deviate, don't don't waste too much time trying to consolidate what you've learned by trying to do your own stuff and then making a mess of it because you're too early on in the training and then you kind of demotivate yourself and you think it's not working right so rather than trying to plan your own halves and thirds right 
um, you can do that. You know, do 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 what whatever you will, right? But I advise you instead to look at some other animation and see if you can find halves and thirds and make studies from it, right? And then try to make those halves and thirds work in that regard, right? Because then you're still training yourself in the application of halves and thirds. Because when you're learning from my lectures, you're learning about halves and thirds and you're applying what you're learning as you're following my lecture. But then you confuse yourself when you're too early on, you didn't try to go and do your own thing with all these halves and all these thirds with, because there's so much more to learn about the application of halves and thirds as you progress through the library. But you're not allowing yourself to progress because you're getting stuck trying to in your own mess of trying to consolidate too much, too, early, too soon, right? So if you want to, I would rather suggest that you study um, other things that inspire you and look at the look for the keyframes because this is what it's all about extremes keys and breakdowns and see where the keys are placed between the extremes and see where the breakdowns are placed right and that's why you're spacing is it spaced in a half is it spaced on a third all these kind of things are going to help you right so now we look at the head turn like that you see that little bit of expression going on in his head just like that and this this isn't even timed right so just like you look at this blue you see it like that right you think oh yeah that's nice but it's nothing like what the final thing looks like because when you look at the final thing right there's it's there's it's slower in certain areas letting certain poses read like here it just goes through it so timing and all that so while you're watching me doing this it looks nice but it's not you know there's so much more to it than this right because of the timing right anyway so how are we doing for time anyway 151 so oh we got a good question from johanna mendez let me read Johanna Mendes' Mendes's question. question and then I'll, while I'm tidying up this Shere Khan face, I will see if I can answer it. Hi, Johanna Mendes. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. I want to know how to get into the animation industry. I know drawing and painting. I know many programs from Photoshop and editing and many more. Okay, Johanna, well, let me tell you um, without, tr without trying too hard to convince you about my real animated training library let me give you some constructive constructive things to think about well since you're mentioning drawing and painting all right you you seem to me to be a uh, what i would call a real artist somebody who has a passion for drawing somebody who has a passion for painting uh drawing and painting are disciplines in their own right right so they are very um they are very much separate from animation um because they can you know there are many ways to draw and there are many ways to paint right now the kind of animation what i'm doing here i call real animation because you've mentioned the animation industry joanna and it's important i talk to you about this because there was a time when the animation industry was dealing with animation, uh, which is what we're doing here, which is drawing using primarily the medium of drawing, what I call real animation. There were other forms of animation, but they were given names like stop motion, puppet motion. All right. Then computers came along and computers generally uh, were looking to economize animation and Computers concern themselves mainly with the building of puppets and the manipulation of puppets. So, again, they're like a step forward for a stop motion animation. 
Now, I'm not going to give you an animation history lesson here, but it's important that I make you aware of this since you've mentioned you draw and you paint. Okay, because this is where many, many people, and this is exactly why I'm here online. I'm here to give people hope and to inspire them and to, to tell them that, yes, real animation still exists. But a lot of people want to break into the animation industry. And they still have, depending on their age, this connection that animation involves drawing which it bloody well should because that's animation but now the industry is all about puppets and even in the field of 2d it's all about software which is why you you mentioned this animation software so getting into the animation industry doesn't necessarily it, as much as it pains me to say this you don't really need to be able to draw very well or even animate very well um, we have somebody in the chat. He may still be there. He's working for the Walt Disney Studios as a freelancer in his own native country at the moment. Um, he's called himself Mr. Leon in the chat. Now, he, um, he will verify what I'm telling you. Um, the animation industry now is concerned with building these puppets in uh, the software uh, which is you know a separate job not necessarily the job for the digital puppeteer who is probably classified as an animator today right so these people will you know you will mainly play with the software and manipulate the puppet all right and you know he's mentioned many times in the chat that they tell him he's wasting time trying to draw things or do whatever and he should save time you know, use a puppet as much as possible and all this and that um so i need you to be clear that the animation industry is not just about drawing okay and how well you good you can draw it was when i was in it but I voluntarily left the animation industry because it became less about drawing and more about, you know, playing with software and puppets. But that said, um, if you want to be a good animator, right? So first to get into the animation industry, make friends in the industry, network, contact, speak to people on LinkedIn, uh, find out the requirements of getting into certain studios and dedicate yourself to meeting those requirements it really is that simple all right um but the the reason people struggle is very much because they're like you at heart they're artists and they want to feel that they've earned their place in this supposed you know festering ground for artists which is now just a place for digital puppeteers to pull and play um, and you want to feel validated as an artist so I can talk to you more about that which is why I'm here I'm training people in what I call the art of real animation which very much is drawing and drawing and using animation techniques so I would say if you want to get into the industry and you want to do 2d software is important focus on primarily uh, Toon Boom Harmony, all right? If you want to be a digital puppeteer stroke animator in the industry, right? So yes, software is important. I wouldn't worry too much about, I wouldn't waste time with programs like Adobe for animation. Uh, maybe you can somehow find some work, but most major studios do their work in Harmony, some might use moho some might use tv paint less so because tv paint is more geared towards the kind of animation that i'm talking about here which is real animation hand-drawn animation so i would suggest you learn about Doom boom harmony and learn about the puppetry of that 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 is very important if you want to be an industry animator um but also that's you know you need to make contacts you need to network you need to make people in the industry aware of who you are and aware of what you do and you need to basically stay in their mind's eye as often as possible which is what um which is what is really what does it 
you know, even back in my day when I was doing real animation, hand-drawn animation, many times uh, people got jobs not based on their ability or skill. Uh, they got them based on, you know, being very friendly and visiting the studios and just always hanging out, you know, um, with people in there. So it's a balancing act. So that's my quick talk on getting into the industry. Now, why I'm really here, Joanna, I'm here to help people um, feel great about their work. I'm here to help real artists um, exploit their passion of bringing their their dreams to life, their drawings to life, uh, their characters, which they so passionately like to draw, you know, uh, and see their drawings come to life, see their make their artwork live above and beyond simple illustration. So I would say you need to focus on two things primarily. Um, drawing and animation. Um, less so painting unless you were more in, if you were interested in being an art director or a color director or a character designer or something like that. Um, less so uh, the painting. Because drawing for animation is very different to drawing for illustration or... Uh, now let me just see what's happening to the neck here. Drawing for animation is very different to drawing for um, fine art or illustration, right? Illustration, you have to think about just one drawing, right? Which is why you're probably doing a lot of painting and things like that. Um, animation, we've got to think about a series of drawings which are doing what I like to call a dance with dimension to create the illusion of um, two dimensions or three dimensions or, you know, even cheating dimension to create that illusion. Um, I'm just concentrating on this this shape here. It goes into this shape here. All right. So that's going to be two thirds of the way. All right. So we need to think about things like that. And I, aside from the drawing element, now a lot of people think, oh yeah drawing is what it's all about right you need to be able to draw but the thing is is if i was just drawing these marks and they wasn't following certain rules nothing would really work particularly well right um i need to think about something very important i need to work with what we call the law animation law now, their animation has laws. Um, it has 12 laws. It has... Um, I've broken them down. I've taken them from the Disney Nine Old Men's 12 Principles, but I've structured them in a way to, to rebrand them as animation law. Because the, the 12 principles aren't given in any specific order. So development is a bit difficult. So I would suggest that you learn about the 12 laws of animation and you get started by getting an understanding of the three fundamental laws of animation which are the law of timing the law of arcing the law of slowing in and slowing out um, and then these are the basic fundamental laws of any movement um, and then once you get through um, those laws there'll be uh, three other laws of movement which are you're going to learn about what we're doing a little bit here today what we call the law of pose to pose and straight ahead right so you need to understand very much you understand reading and knowing a little bit about them isn't understanding them understanding them is is, is taking the information acquiring that knowledge and applying it like like what you see me doing here you see me everything I'm doing here is consolidating animation law these stripes look very complicated but I'm making them just 
two thirds away from the other one. So what am I using? I'm using the law of arcing. I'm using the law of timing. I'm using the law of slowing in and slowing out, which is also known as timing and spacing to some people, right? So this is going to be an error if I don't turn this a little bit more discreetly, right? So I'm I'm consolidating the law with everything that I'm doing, and that's how you're going to get good at this stuff. So being a good animator and being in the animation industry are two very, very different things. So, I mean, thanks for my question. And just to recap, because I'm trying to answer you while my subconscious is taking over the animation side of things, but it's a little bit of brain work going on here. So just to recap, if you're still with me, as I've been uh, waffling away here trying to give you advice, Right, so animation industry doesn't necessarily mean that you need to really excel at drawing anymore, or even animation. You just need to understand basic rules of animation, like timing, slowing in, slowing out, um, follow through, overlap and drag, pose to pose, straight ahead, arcing. Uh, you need to learn these things, um, basic laws of movement, and you need to learn software. And you need to network a lot and, uh, you know, contact people on LinkedIn, ask people for advice. People are very helpful, just like I am. Everybody wants to be helpful. Everybody wants to uh, support. People are generally good at heart, in spite of what, what, what you may, common things may say. People are, people are always wanting to offer assistance and help. So maybe reach out to people on LinkedIn um, and try something with that. But getting a job in the animation industry doesn't mean that, I mean, the state of the animation industry, in my personal opinion, is, is, is it's, it's, it's awful, which is why I left and why I'm doing what I'm doing here. I'm empowering real artists to actually learn how to do this stuff properly. Um, so let me just pick the next head. So I would suggest if you really want to get good at animation, um, which is separate, you focus on learning the 12 laws of animation. Um, so hopefully there was something in there that I said which could be of some value to you, Joanna. Thank you. If not, my subconscious is being really pushed today. So my talking, which I'm generally quite proud of, my ability to just waffle and talk a lot of good spit a lot of good knowledge um i'm a little tested in where my attention is while i'm doing this so if i was a little bit unclear i'm sorry about that right so now i'm figuring out the the middle point of the head turn here right bum, bum. right so this is going to arc up like this. So again, law of arcing. So again, it's it seems like a simple sweeping arc, but it goes down and up. So there's a straight down and up like this, right? But there's going to be so much more, or up this way. There's going to be so much more to this than what I'm doing. Another reason why I wanted to look at Shere Khan's head turn is I wanted to um, understand his face, right? So I'm just going to map out this shape of things here to understand his head. We've seen it at profile. We've seen it at uh, three quarter. We've seen it squashed. We've seen it stretched. Now we're seeing it from front view. So let's just quickly take a look at this basic shape. Now this is on a halfway, right? So you can see the head is turning like that. Right, okay. Bum, bum, bum. Thank you very much. Cha-Cha Charlie. 
how many frames can you make in one hour? It depends. It depends. Um, if I know the character, um, I, I did all of this. I did uh, like, I did all of this, not tidy, clean line, but I did all of these within, like this probably took me an hour and a half, right? Because I didn't really refer to anything. Here I'm making a study of this, right? So again, there's no blanket and it depends what you're doing. It depends what kind of animation and what kind of characters you're doing. So there's no blanket answer to this stuff, right? So I don't know how old a lot of people are. I'm very, very uh, grateful for people coming and asking me. If you don't ask, you don't get. But I'm here to basically um, inspire, communicate and and enlighten some of the younger generation that are interested in this is don't you know the only reason the only way you you can estimate how long something will take you is when you've been at it for a long time and even then it's not going to happen right because i've been at this a very long time you know it's been my life you know i've, I've been in in the, somebody said Thank you for my knowledge of the industry. Well, I've worked the industry for 20 years and I've worked as a supervisor, a director, uh, a character designer, a head of story, um, as well as just a normal animator and a normal, you know. So I've done all these things. Um, and yes, I can say, well, I'll be able to knock out the main aspects of this scene in about three or pushing it four hours on a live stream but you still don't really know right we don't really know because i've never worked with this character before in my life right so i would say don't think about saving time especially if you're a learner think about acquiring the skills what the, the fact of the matter is is i am super fast i know that right I'm super fast and I'm super good and I know that and the thing the the thing is is I'm not saying that to be boastful what I'm saying is is how I got to that level yes many times um, in my life when I was young like a lot of you like a lot of you I was concerned about saving time looking for the shortcut um, you know the security, the needing to know, the needing to know if I had what it takes, right? We all we all do that. The needing to know if you have what it takes. The the fear of can you do it? I uh, hope uh, and and then how fast can you do it? As if that matters, right? The thing is, is speed is just an effect of a cause, right? And the cause that that we um this is all gonna be a half i'm gonna do my own thing with this body now right because i see i think it's like everything is half maybe his body may have been on thirds but i don't have time to look at all that stuff at the moment uh so to the more uh, seasoned people in the audience just letting you know i'm aware of that um so here i don't really need to think too much i'll go out from this one to this one right so the the thing is is speed and efficiency are simply the effects and what you want to do if you want an effect is you want to go to the cause right and the cause of all of this stuff of even your security because i can tell you what i'm not uh, there are many things in my life that I'm perhaps insecure about and possibly very insecure, um, maybe. I can't think of one right of hand, but I, I know that there are. Um, and um, there are, but I'll tell you one thing. When it comes to animation and drawing, I have no fear or insecurity. I am completely like... I'll go out and tell people I'm a master, right? Without flinching. I don't care what they think. I know it doesn't matter. I don't care. 
You want to contest me? Go for it. I don't care because I know, right? And it's that kind of self-certainty, sufficiency, and, uh, you know, efficiency and confidence that I'm talking about. It's an effect. And the effect is that, does it mean that I th think I've learned everything and I can't get any better? No. There are, you know, achieving mastery of something is only the beginning. Only the beginning on your, you know, transcendence into legendary status. Okay. You know, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep advancing. So just to make people aware of that, right? So the thing is, is these are effects of a cause. And the cause is getting so efficient and so grounded in fundamental knowledge, know-how, ability, that you just do it. You just know that you're going to be able to do it. Now, I may, might have an idea that I might be able to do such and such frames per hour or whatever, but really, I don't care, right? It, it doesn't matter because I know that Whatever I do, it'll work, it'll be good, and it'll be done on time, right? So, the thing is, getting back to that original thing about the fear and the, you know, wanting to be fast and having a ballpark figure, you can never know. So, I can tell you all this stuff about how I think I truly feel about myself as an animator and what I can do and, the, and my ability, you know, I'll come here on a live stream. I'll I'll break down uh, the the greatest animator, arguably that ever lived, Miltz calls Shere Khan, and I'll do it effortlessly while talking to you. That's the way I see myself, and that's what I do. Do I? Th I've got an idea. It'll take about three to four hours, but I don't know. And if it doesn't, if it takes longer, it takes longer. So what? We'll get there, right? So, um, don't, I'm not saying that the person that asked me this question is, it may have just been a, a curiosity question, right? But as I said, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to help. Um, AMB stands for my name, Urshad Mirza Beg, but it also stands for the, the word animation, motivation, and belief, which is what AMB animation brand is, aside from just me, okay? It's here to motivate, inspire you to believe in yourself and your own abilities that wh whatever you see me doing here, whatever you hear coming out of my mouth in terms of ability and skill, you're just the same. You can do that. If you want it, you so can have it, all right? Um, so I'm going to disclose to you the things I've learned along the way. And if I, I come across certain topics like cutting corners, particularly using animation software and all these kind of things, I'm going to use it as an opportunity to get on my soapbox a little bit and talk about um, how these things don't really matter. What matters is you. And what matters is that you understand how to execute. You understand how to draw properly. You understand how to animate properly. And you're going to take all the time in the world that it has to take to do that because it will be worth it, right? It'll be a hundred percent worth it because it's the cause of all of this stuff afterwards. It's the cause of the super efficiency, right? I'm, I'm studying this animation, but I'll tell you what, I'm not particularly struggling. And I'm doing it live. It's like a little session for me. Let's hang out. Let's hang out while I whittle out these drawings. And. And share some stuff with you. And I learn. Now I'm doing this to learn. But uh, again. 
you see this is the effects it's the effects of spending the right amount of time and that is something that I think today's generation really struggle with um, it's time and patience you know people live in an instant gratification culture where you get everything at the push of a button you know in a culture where the news everything is the news but the news make you feel like you're in the know about what you need to be in the know about like that really matters right um it's available to you at the push of a button what's the weather to, what's this what's that so you're spoiled in that regard and that's a great thing it's a good thing to have but the negative effects are is people think it's going to happen for them when it comes to their animation their drawing and all these things that you know take a certain amount of time right and time is a time is an illusion when you think about it um it's not necessarily <laughs> um things feel like they take longer when you're bored and frustrated right now let me just figure this out okay I've got to tackle this I'm doing this on my own now right so I'm gonna find this one and I'm gonna see where it goes right it's gone here right so that's that that's the that's the giveaway for me right so it's there and it's there so I'm gonna put it halfway in between something like that right bingo then that's gonna be halfway in between right now I'm just gonna animate backwards into that right there right you see now how did I I didn't panic I understand how right because I've taken the adequate amount of time that I, that I need to take to be able to do do that All right I can do it on a live stream look here's a little triangle here there's a little triangle here what we're gonna do we're gonna plant a little triangle in the middle there like that you see you see how easy this is when you spend time focusing on the right things right that's all there is to it boom boom then this one he goes this way this this way that one disappears and these turn on back on themselves something appears here we'll just we can't do that let's just make it appear like that it's okay now it just grows out I'll tell you what that's just one of those things um, oh no it's that one yeah it's that one there this turns here this turns here this turns here boom right now so that's the that's that side of him done right now we're gonna do the the neck the scapula portion so what happens to that scapula portion okay so it's this this one here there's a triangle a negative triangle there and that negative triangle is there right so I'm gonna put on my light box I'm gonna find it even though it's hard to see it at the moment negative triangle is up here right so I'm gonna see that that's there right now this negative triangle is here right so I see that that's there okay okay so it's gonna be kind of like here his head is gonna be in the way and the thing is is I'm not looking at the reference one I could be and as I do look at it it's it's not far off actually it's not far off but I did kind of do my own little thing here so that's just the way it's gonna be 
this one gets a little bit smaller here like this All right so it's a little different to what what's in there but i'm not going to be spending too much time on that okay so now he's actually got a longer thing as i look at that because that goes all the way down there right so that continues down there like that boom 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 there we go And then this shape is a little different. Let's return that. More like that. Yes. And this, these two would be more here. Oh, we're drawing on the background layer. Edit, cut. This is fun. Edit, paste. Right. Bum, 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 bum. Right, so these two would be more up here like this and that one will be there that sorts that out okay bum 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 there we go right so there's still going to be some more uh poses that need done oh mage burger is still there mage the secret science of shape simplification type it in the chat <laughs> um there we go building brain cells actually that mr okay so here we see this right so i'm gonna now put a breakdown between here and here not here and here here and here right there's something happening between here and here right so let's see what we do between there and there bum, bum, bum. right let's see now the body barely moves i remember but let's see what faces he makes how are we doing for time by the way uh two hours 27 not bad not bad okay so then we close the mouth we open the mouth we go down we close it up again we go into this shape and then we relax out okay so let's do a squash and stretch one no let's do the mouth closed okay that's better so he's just talking away here so it's kind of difficult to choose one right so i'm just gonna relax his body out what normally happens when you when you settle a character out when they're not moving is, is you relax their shoulders a little bit and it creates something now here it's difficult for me to really i'm gonna have to just make this up because i, I i'm not animating him talking i'm just looking at something so his eyes are still very much in the down position he's still very much but maybe he's slowly rising his head i don't know right this is actually the tricky tricky because there's not he's more or less staying in this pose before changing into the last relaxing into the last one so let's play with the squash and stretch a little bit in his cheeks i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna maybe have to embellish and try my own thing here let's bring the ear down we see that the ear is down like that okay right yeah i'm gonna just go between these two shapes rather than yeah hmm. let's see how that works 
Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. So you can see he's stalking while he's turning. Now I will be doing a few other frames um, I'm after this frame because I want to sell the timing to you all, right? So um, I will be here for a little bit longer, but not too much. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see, I've pressed save on the wrong screen. Bear with me. All right, now, um, I think it's just easier for me to work heavy now I will I, I will look at the character but remember I'm here to to learn how to animate this boy on my own right so while I'm looking at the character I'm trying to and I'm looking at the expression to get it right I'm trying to make my mouth and nose squash and stretch in relation to that. And it's very difficult to do that from just looking at a screen, right? I've got to apply what my advanced knowledge of squash and stretch and facial drawing and all that stuff to make this work. So I'm going to bring his smile up within there like that. This is actually, even though my own personal Taigo character is very different to this guy, this is, I think this is going to help me a little bit, even on that. Um, just to get used to all these stripes. And this is like this. So his eyebrow is little bit on the cross side here we need to watch his he's still got half an eye open here the other one is fully opened um, the triangle of the head goes back these subtle things are what make real Disney animation great right um, Again, I don't want to draw the comparison, but because it's the in thing, a lot of youngsters are so into anime and it's so dead in the face, right? When you talk, your brow moves, your head moves, everything moves, your hairline moves, right? Your facial muscles are dancing around, right? And it's important to, to do that. That's what differentiated feature animation not all this like this sakuga somersaulting man and running with whizzing camera it's so quick and it's so easy but you're also wowed by it like this is the subtle stuff that really really is what makes animation advanced and good right it's it's slow you see the face not moving around much so your eye has to judge it is it deforming correctly is that squash it's not just about the volume and the mass is the squash and stretch working does it look right does it have appeal is it exaggerated enough right all these laws these are super super important things all right now I've done that heavily, but I'm going to just tidy that up a bit as I look at these two frames. I don't know about you. I mean, I think you guys are liking this. I, um, I am being a, a, a little slower than usual um, on this particular live stream because I want to learn these shapes myself many times i break down stuff because you know i'm building an archive people are interested in anime i'll be very honest i'm not so interested but i'll break that stuff down because it's a part of you know what we're doing in real animator training understanding all types of animation but this is something that i really want to learn myself 
I learn everything when I break it down, but I'm taking my sweet time. Well, not really because I'm live, but I'm taking a little longer. So hopefully it's a little, you know, it can be a little bit monotonous maybe for some of you, but hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, you know, watch it in double speed on the replay or something if you're interested and you don't really want to sit through the live. Right, so here we got the mouth is like that. really looking at that mouth shape actually that should be more like that so I'll in a, in a minute before I um, go any further with this I'll explain to you some things that I feel I've picked up about roughing in Shere Khan's face on my own and animating it on my own without um, Always you, you should look at the, the model for reference, but you, if you, you, you can't really produce a strong piece of animation if, you, if you're constantly looking at the model sheet and worrying about drawing on model. So you need to get a feel for the character's shapes, right? And I'll tell you what I have got ascertained, right? Now, I, to be honest, doing this live, I thought it'll be great. It'll create good content, and I'll share with you all the things that I learned, right, as I do it. Now, in all fairness, it's a bit too altruistic because I've not learned as much as I would like to have learned because, obviously, I'm live and I'm talking and I'm sharing things with you as I'm doing that. But still, I've picked up some things, and... I'm going to show them to you as soon as I've finished this particular frame. The stripes are going to be quite easy because he's not moving too much at all here. Just subtle stuff. Right, okay. So here I'm just going to relax him out on a half. So again, here this is all my own subtle improvisation because it's kind of impossible to without the original frames to refer to because they're so close to each other it's kind of impossible to really um, figure out what's going on with the body and the stripes from just looking at the YouTube video um, so I've had to just make it kind of work All right so let's bring that up these will be just moving a little bit in accordance so i would just have his head talking and his body relaxing out on a mega they, he's actually got the character breathing it's so subtle he's got the body it's on trace backs but it's slightly going up and then it's slightly going down it's so good this animation it's like you don't it's like squash and stretch you don't see the character breathing but you feel it for some reason Shere Khan is very very subtle but he feels so full of life he hardly moves but he doesn't feel like a stiff anime drawing with a pancake mouth going come over here you bastard i will kill you ah it's he feels like he's really alive um and his body is hardly feel you know hardly really moves but um he's got the he's got these subtle breaths that he's making the character take that makes it feel like it's alive okay so here we have the head turn but I'm gonna go further because there's a lot of lot of frames in between and a lot of timing as I said when you look at this guy like that right it explains the animation, but it doesn't really. When you look at it with the timing, right? 
but the timing it's a lot it's, there's a lot more like he's now realized something here is just like oh gulp okay whatever so here it's the same thing like it's a nice movement but it's so much nicer when you time it out right so we're gonna start um time just looking at a few other frames now and i may not really waste time on the stripes as i do those frames we're gonna look at the the the, the timing of the head um boom, 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 boom. How are we doing for time of the stream? Two hours, 40 minutes. Not bad at all. Right. Um, right. So there's a little bit of talking as he's turning his head in between hair and hair. Right. So there's a lot there's a lot of mouth movement so I'm going to find a halfway point ah yes I'm going to use that that's a good frame to use and I'm just going to give you an example so there's a lot of dialogue happening just between this right so he's going to be opening and closing his mouth a number of times but I'm only going to do one to give you a feel and I'm gonna put it halfway in between now it may not necessarily be halfway in between because it's because I'm kind of just breaking it down to show you the what goes on in between the head right and it's difficult on YouTube to check the spacing while his head's constantly moving and he's doing all that I would need to be alone I would need to concentrate but I'm just gonna plonk this head halfway in the middle uh, and and use this stalking pose of his head right um, so again here I'm going to now I'm now going to let me put that on I'm now going to look at the shape of his head hair which is this triangle here and now this triangle is now like this, but it's got an extra square edge on it, right? So we're going to start introducing that hair, right? Like that, right? That ear, I'm going to just plonk halfway in. The nose is more or less the same kind of thing. So it's this line here, right? and this line here right so these are the things i look for when i'm when i'm doing this stuff now he's got nice squash and stretch he's stalking his mouth is open so i don't need to worry too much about that i'm noticing it's all in the line oopsie i thought i'd tell you, right okay one of the things that i i got from sheer khan is right he's got these two side things here his head is in here right and he's got basically eye triangles and he's got his nose which comes in the middle here like this right then everything else is all down to his mouth like this is the kind of thing that i've ascertained from roughing the guy's head out now he's got a head triangle which goes in on here and then the ears maybe maybe a bit lower or whatever so if I'm gonna be roughing this character out that's probably the way that I would rough my own animation right and I would still need to probably look at a few more of his mouth shapes to get start getting the feel for that if I was gonna animate that myself right so just to show you what we pick up what i pick up along the way right so now here we have his neck his neck is actually this is actually already in his neck so i put that halfway right but really it's like that right 
so the arc is more like this right i'm gonna keep that right because that's very um telling that's that's kind of um that's 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 kind of nice actually so i'm gonna do that right because rather than putting it halfway i'm gonna put it two-thirds of the way Now, I, I shouldn't be fiddling with this, but I am because I've got a new bit of information that I want to give you, right? Right? Because when I'm looking at his neck, it's close to his body here, like this. So why did I... Look, it's still half of the way, right? It's still half, half, half of the way. But the arc is not this. I was making the arc this. The arc is this, right? The arc is this. It's 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 like he's putting his head towards it like him like this right so then this is going to crawl up this is going to be more like this right so that's better see i could i could have just cheated it and not did that and made it look like i really you know i'm so badass and i'm whatever but then, who am I really deceiving, right? Like I said, we're all doing this together to learn. Right, so this comes up here like this. And I'm going to pay attention to the nose of the other one, right? And the eye triangle is this way so this eye is almost two-thirds of the way down right it's actually two-thirds not a half the more i look at it it's two-thirds not a half now this mouth shape is pretty cool right it comes up like this squash and stretch in the mouth like that awesome and the ear and all those things are kind of as is right right so I'm gonna just tidy that head up and I won't do all the stripes but I'm gonna do a midway for each one like a breakdown for each one so between here and here I'm gonna use these two poses to get this right and again I'm looking at what he's done, but I'm consolidating my understanding of the model by flipping it with my animation, my frames, not really my animation, it's his animation, um, to get this right. right. So we have that. Now we've got the eye shape coming here like that so this is pretty much the same eye shape and his eyebrows are up to the side like that there we go now i'm watching how his head animates um how his ear The square shape these things are all bunched together yep so they're more down they're dragging a little bit so we'll pay more attention to them down here like that they can come up yep as he stretches squash and stretch right all in the mouth Get these nice squash and stretch shapes right there we go now let's look at this this is what i really want to look at the mouth shape so we've got the inside of the mouth 
as it's going up on itself and it's coming down now here we're going in and around with a tooth up here like that I love these mouth shapes movies like the Lion King they're all right but their mouth shapes do not they just have these like very structured construction-y muzzles so it's nice just a little too formulaic I love Milk Carl the or not just Milk Carl Ollie Johnson Frank Thomas all these guys they knew all this stuff and they just went into illustrator mode with it right didn't have so much formula and that's why I'm enjoying studying these I want to remove the formula from my own drawing right like I said I'll openly state that I believe myself to be a, a master of animation but that doesn't mean I don't have growth to take I want to aspire to the levels of people like this guy here Milk Carl, the world's best in my opinion. Um, I'm not going to do the stripes. I'm going to leave it like that. Right. So let's do the whiskers. Mm -mm -mm. See a nice little bit of follow through and overlap in those whiskers there. So we see so let's see what little difference that one frames makes but we're going to do it between all of them right so you can see that little slow out but it's actually you know a little slow move from here to here it's in dialogue in stages then we're going to go into this now let's let's do the timing into this frame right. now there's a heavy slow in into that frame so I'm gonna wanna have a look. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'm gonna do this one here. Let's play it safe on a half, right? Because he really hits this expression right and the way he hits this expression is everything is kind of on a half it's fun right so his chin is halfway here his nose will be halfway here but it'll be arcing into that And just because it's half, you don't want to have the light box do all the halving for you. This kind of stuff is super appealing. You're going to have to flip and animate it and see how it changes. And you don't want it growing into the pose, right? You don't want it just morphing into that pose. Right. Let's take a look at this. Got that where I want it. So I'm going to animate this eye. The space there is wrong, see? I'm going to animate. You want to have the space within the triangle of the eye. That's it. You see, so the light box is not going to help with subtle stuff like this. It is. It's helped me plot out where I want everything. But that's about it, right? It's not really going to do me many favors if I want to just rely on 
the lines being halfway in between. All right, so these are here like that. Now, what I love about it is the smile, right? He's going from the smile like this, so I need to come out of that. Look at that. Right. So we're going to go. It's actually, I've got that a little too extreme. Again, I don't want to focus on the light box alone. It's what looks right. Now the pull. The pull on his lip. Just fantastic little pull there what a face right. and do that let's get turn the light box on here I don't want to spend too much time on these facial stripes we'll just put them in in shorthand like that then we'll put the body in as just an outline All right so now let's see the difference that makes Right. I'm going to put one more because there's a heavy slowing in that expression, right? I'm going to put one more, right? So I know for a fact that he lingers on that expression. So I want that to read for you guys. All right. So it's almost like I'm going to do a little favor here. Right. and this I am going to just do very very suggestive quick like shapes light box in betweening because um, I don't really want didn't really want to add the other one but I want you guys to get the feeling for the timing of this scene right so he's gonna stay around this pose more here so just bear with me while I put this frame in there bum, bum, bum. Good. right and we're going to do the ear there like that. Just don't really need to spend too much time on that one. It's just there just for you to quickly get the feel that, yes, we're hanging around that pose, right? Right. So when I scrub that, you'll get the feel for that. Right. So now you can see that. And we're going to come out of it. So we come out of it. Um, let's see. Let me quickly save this. Um, okay. Right, so this is the breakdown between here and here. Right? So the breakdown between here and here is on a half. So the nose is going to be here, like this. Right? But we're favoring this side of the head still we're gonna open his mouth 
right. we're still favoring very much this side of the head so I'm looking at his drawing and I'm making quick scribble of his drawing but then I'm gonna draw my own understanding of Shere Khan on it while just mapping this out in the space where it needs to be right because I'm not getting everything right here but I'm, I see remember that thing what I told you about his head right that's going to be like this and his neck is up here like that okay so that's the breakdown of his head that's essentially how it moves I could leave it like that but I'm going to draw it in for you All right you're going to see that Bum, bum, bum. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Nothing much. Let's just continue with this. Um, ba, ba, bum. Right, okay. So I'm going to flip between this and this, actually. It's and get my expression so we're gonna make the angry eye shape all right we can see he's looking like that now we've got the the nose which is the width of one of his eye sockets right the nose is going to come straight. Now again, using the secret science of shape simplification, I'm going to have something like that. There we go. I'm being quite fast here, so I'm I'm getting his expression, but I'm relying a lot more on my developed understanding of him as opposed to a hundred percent referring to the master's drawings. Um, so this is gonna be like this. Yeah, line straight. Now we have the dome triangle of his head. With this three marks in here. This comes off here like this and this frames that. Let's see how that animates. Yes, you see I got the arcs down and now I'm using this frame more so to get this three-quarter front we call it so three-quarter front bum, 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 bum. down and through a little bit off there so I'm relying more on my own developed understanding but I'm looking back at the the model I'm not quite right on this one but it'll do it'll do for what, what we're doing here but that's the whole thing about it um, testing right? how's my Khan right <laughs> how's my Khan <clears throat> right, so this it's like that. Boom, boom, there. That'll do. That's enough. Right, let's uh, turn on the box and just put the body in there. All right. His whiskers don't really do much here. 
Bum, 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 bum. Right. Um, how are we doing for timing on the stream? Three hours. Not bad. We've almost done. We almost made it in the three hour mark. We still got a little bit left to do, but um, not too much. Right. So we see the head turn now. This happens. So the little. This stretch really works when you watch this is a lot of talking here he's like talking and i've only got one frame to balance that so you need to understand that then he gives the sly look right then he turns it's anticipation right right so it doesn't really sell it enough it looks great but you need to see the scene where there's a lot of mouth tattle up and down and looking as he's turning then the thought then the head turn right now i'm just gonna look at what's next between not each stream uh they're not all four hours uh, <laughs> if you want me to be here long i'm trying i try to get through them as quickly as i can Real animator training library streams are limited to an hour, an hour and a half, apart from when we get to the advanced archive. Because when you're learning and you're following step by step, your level of concentration goes down. So you lose a lot of information. And I always suggest to people studying in the training library, look, take a break if, you, if you're losing concentration anyway. But I try to keep training streams an hour, an hour and a half. These streams they're just they're, they're edutainment they're fun so they just go on and on and i try to get them none of them has really gone beyond four hours but i try to um right i try to get them within that mark okay so now let me do the one between here and here and again, I'm thinking that it is, the head is moving up to this shape. His head actually, he actually looks like Milk Cow in this particular drawing. Um, so here he's got a squash and stretch in the mouth before going up and then i'm not really going to bother this is probably going to be the last drawing that i'm going to do right and then we're going to call the stream right so we're going to arc the head here the eye so let me be quite quick with the way that i do this one i'm going to have this here with the nose gonna be in here like this his mouth is making a nice kind of smile shape bottom lip under the mouth this big chiseled chin the big jaw mandible you can see he studied the skull of a tiger and he's put this weird abstraction to it is really really nice as the mental portion of the skull is quite intimidating on these beasts right so that's going to be like that so in a nutshell you can see the the what it'll look like here but i'll just draw it in right so yeah you got something like that bum 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 so a lot of talking so when you animate dialogue you animate it like this right you don't necessarily go in for the lip sync right the timing comes afterwards right the phrasing and the timing as i mentioned all you beginners you youngsters you like to see things moving and all fluid fluid but you have to time these things if you really want to see them sync you got to slow things down a lot. You got to, you know, introduce rhythm. 
not just have it all flow out again that's the fascination with that easy sakuga continuous moving stuff it's not really um, testing the animator um, so this is coming around here like that and his expression pretty cool right so his head angle is up like that hmm interesting I'm gonna keep it don't want to spend overly long on this now right so now this nose is interesting it's a little rounder than usual and it's squashing and stretching into the ooh of the mouth shape right so i'm gonna take a good look at that and relate that to the previous frame and all this stuff comes around like that okay yeah that works um and this goes straight this comes out straight down in in here now this comes down here and off to the side and he smiles like that right and then we've got the ooh shape of the mouth just like that there we go and the bottom comes here slowing down a little bit on this last frame since it is the last frame that I'm gonna do right and this comes in and out on that side all right um, ear and the other ear is here that's good subtle face this one his expressions are just so on point um, bum, bum, bum. all right now I'm just going to put my suggestive halfing lines in there to keep the thing moving all right there we go right so I'm not gonna do like three hours nine minutes um, I'm not going to do any more than that right but there we see the advanced head turn of the character it's broken into three stages so the primary action is the head turn but the secondary action is this little bit of acting before the head turn right with the talking and the glance then there's an anticipation of the head turn with this look then there's the actual head turn right and the follow-through which will be the continuing talk into the slow in into this so that's the main bare bones of it all 
but you can see there's a there's a lot of subtlety and genius going on in here there's there's the basic head turn arc which i even teach in the training library basics archive is that right so we see the head go straight here right um and then we see the arc like that right but the musculature in the neck and i want you to see the spine here right so as the neck turns the middle line of the spine moves right it turns but his shoulders are still got his back to us right so that is really subtle anatomy going on there the scapula movement and then this part you know this side of his latissimus dorsi turns but we've still got his shoulders so he's turning to us and then eventually his shoulders turn and round the other way and we see the front side as he turns more to us and that and obviously we talked about the deformation of the stripes to depict the angle of his neck um, so hopefully you know that has opened your eyes into the the more complex aspects of a, a head turn uh, in real animation and it's been my absolute pleasure to do that to give you this demo and to talk a little bit about model and acting so again I'm gonna have a little go um, at the end of all of that now I have been talking to a lot of you guys so I'm gonna have a little go and see what kind of information I've retained right so he would have had this kind of head right and these triangles of the eyes right so I'm not looking at the character he would have his nose right which would be something like this right he would have his mouth which would come off to the side like this right and then he would have his chin here right and then his ears would be to the sides like this then he would also have those things which would lead off to there like that so that's the kind of way that i would personally be roughing him this is what I've, some of the information i've retained i would probably need to do more work with him off stream um, because as i said while being on stream a lot of the a lot of my attention was in making sure i share with you things the things that i see um let me try and do a open mouth right so i'm trying to play with his angles here all right maybe he would have a lip here like this right yeah i'm i mean not quite but i'm slowly getting something out of it I would need to look at more mouth shapes on my own without the live stream to be able to get better but I feel I'm, I've kind of got a good grasp of his head to play and have fun 
but I would need more looking at the model to do that. All right. Um, I'm going to leave this one up for you all. Um, let me quickly just come into the chat and see, see if, if there, there have been, been any questions at all. Um, the lovely Hervonia Baker. Mage Burger is still awake. Um, thanks for the answer. I do not know anyone. I've worked on character animation on my own and learned programs to do it. I'm going to learn and use your thank you. Um, try to reach out to people on LinkedIn. Um, I want to do an animation video. Do you think it could help me get into the industry? As I said, the industry are more interested. The industry more now than ever is industry and less art. They're more interested in just people to do what they want them to do. And that's why they're mechanizing everything. And, you know, very soon, you know, they're building software where the actor will just act and the it will be a 2D puppet or a 3D puppet. And there'll be no need for these push button animators that exist today. So maybe you're doing a video might be really very fulfilling and enriching for you. And I highly suggest you do that because that's what life is all about. Right. But it may not necessarily get you into the industry. Um, the industry is interested in having people who are efficient at the things that they want you to be efficient in. Can you use the software? Do you understand the basics of animation? Um, yeah, basically that. Maybe your video could be something. Um, but as I said, you need to look at specific portfolio demo reel requirements. Um, and I think they're more interested in they're more interested in showing what you can do as a puppeteer a stroke animator than a filmmaker um, all right um, I'm going to call it pretty much call it a day uh, because I've gone on for three hours and 21 minutes um, so this is gonna stay in the next video, can you animate Zazu from The Lion King? Maybe, but it's... Uh, well, the, the, yeah. I would rather personally study characters from the real Disney period. The Renaissance Disney period was good. But kind of as I'm advancing more and more, I used to kind of look up to it. But I'm growing and developing and progressing myself. And as I'm becoming better, I'm looking less impressed at that stuff it's good it's good but uh, maybe we might do it for a breakdown archive uh, like we did with the naruto uh, stuff for the training library so i'm not ruling it out but um, zazu in the lion king is not bad but um, not not the most inspiring character for me to look at um are there any tips on identifying extremes and breakdowns a bit better? I still get confused. Okay. The extremes are the main points. The first and the last pose. They're your first extremes. The extreme there, extreme there. Now, you know, when you make your arc, what's the extreme up? What's the extreme down? All right. Now you may have more complicated actions, so it's not that easy. But how many arcs have you got within that one arc? And what are the extreme points of the art? This is animation law, Simon. Oh, Simon Bedouin, animation training library member who's just started the basics archive. Remember, you're going through the training library, Simon. So we're teaching you extremes with the bouncing ball at the peak of the arc, at the bottom of the arc, at the squash point, at the stretch point, the pendulum swinging on either side, the peaks, the breakdowns, and the keys within them. For, I'm so glad that you're asking me this question, and I'm so glad that it's you, because I'm able to tell you that, like, yeah, it's good. You should be trying to identify them at this stage. Don't You haven't done anything wrong. You're asking the right questions. But just as I said in the other thing, it's just like, 
understand that as you're growing it's not a hurry when you have uh, your favorite meal unless you're me <laughs> because I like to go <laughs> my wife says I inhale my food um, you don't you want it to take time or if you're making love you don't want to get that over with quickly right so the point I'm making is um, when you're doing your animation um, it's not a race it's not a rush go through the process understand it trust in the law I'm giving you animation law so if you, you of course trust and depend on me and my program but ultimately what I am as Judge Dredd would say is the law in a sense of what I'm giving you in that real animated training library I'm giving you animation law so that's what you're really putting your trust in it's like putting your trust in electricity you don't trust in the Sun the Sun just rises you don't trust in the electricity when you plug something in you expect it to work that's what law is so it's difficult when you're learning a new skill but animation law is that kind of thing you just don't question it you say it works like the law of gravity what is it go and read and study science you still will try and understand it good luck I've got better things to do with my time okay gravity works all right so same with animation law it works trust it all right thank you very much people uh, for joining me I'm gonna leave this stream up and before I go I'm gonna leave you all with the lovely Charlene uh, real animated training library member sharing uh, just what greatness uh, the real animated training library is and how it helped her thanks for joining me and I'll see you all on the next live stream take it away Charlene <laughs> I remember when I was 12 my parents and I we took a tour at the Walt Disney Animation Studio in Orlando and it was wonderful to actually see an animation studio but however it was apparent that the secrets that they have was definitely elusive to the outsider you know because here as a tourist we were behind a plexiglass so that plexiglass was pretty much like a solid metaphor for like that veil is mystery but um so flashing forward, you know, I, I still wanted to learn animation, but just it was impossible at the moment, at the time, because in order to learn, you would have to go to out-of-state um, university or a private college or even overseas, and it was virtually impossible for me at the time. Earlier last year or so that I um, started to take animation courses and I'm I'm telling you I have seen so many online animation courses but there was always so that veil of mystery flash forward um, to this year I came across AMB's um, YouTube channel AMB real animators tra um, training and I was blown away I just couldn't believe you know, the knowledge that he was putting out there, the lectures that he was doing, it just pretty much ripped that veil of mystery off the face of the earth. And the thing that really sets his um, archive, his online, to, you know, lectures and stuff apart from everyone else is the basics. That's the one thing that a lot of the books, a lot of the online animation stuff lack was the extreme basics you know and when I started on that archive I started understanding the spacing the timing the arcs the um, slow in the slow out and with each exercise it builds up on each other and as a result I start s seeing you know the arcs I start understanding and timing things in my head and it was just so fascinating and because of that it just helped revive you know my lifelong desire of learning animation and it just made me 
so happy that I'm able to pursue and to dream of becoming an animator. So thank you. So, are you going to join the library? 